I'm photographer David Dushman, and this is Vision is Better, a sometimes weekly podcast about the craft and art of photography. Welcome here. Hey, welcome to episode 39 of Vision is Better. Today I want to talk to you about some of the stuff that I use to make my life a little bit easier when I'm making photographs in the field, when I'm doing travel photography, uh, places like India and Italy and that sort of thing, and I'm walking all day and I'm not carrying uh, a ton of long lenses and that sort of thing. So first thing I want to show you is, uh, because I get a lot of questions about this, and I don't know what it is about uh, photographers and our bags, but we got a thing about that. Uh, we need a support group for bags for most of us. So I have a couple of bags. The The first bag that I, uh, is my travel bag and I should have got that, hang on. Ugh. So uh, when I go to a place like Italy, if I'm going for a month or something, this is the bag I use. This is the Think Tank Airport Essentials and it looks really big here because it's a wide angle lens but actually it's it's quite a small bag in terms of uh international carry-on limits it's under almost every international carry-on limit i know and fits on uh on small planes and stuff like that as well bush planes etc uh so i love this bag because uh, i it's backpack straps i can carry it through an airport easily with a smaller carry-on that has laptops and stuff like that and so it's an excellent bag for that but when I get to where I'm going uh, I transfer the gear that I need on a day-to-day -day basis to this bag this is not a camera bag this is just a leather satchel and it, it's um, it's kind of you know it's kind of crappy looking it's uh, it's just basic leather it's got a zipper on uh, the back side so I can put things like passports things that I don't want to lose uh, into the back and carry that and I just sling it over my shoulder. There's nothing fancy on the inside. There's like there's one pocket that a uh, small pocket that I can put things like batteries, extra batteries in. Uh, but it's just a loose, very lightweight satchel. So I can roll it up or lie it flat in my suitcase. I can uh, pack it. And then when I get to where I'm going, I take it out and I use it as a day to day satchel. So I really like this. This is made by a company called uh, I can never get the numbers right. M0851 out of uh, Montreal, Canada. It wasn't cheap. It's, you know, it's a fashion-y kind of bag, but uh, I really like it. I've got a smaller one too that I use for just a couple lenses if that's all I'm carrying and it's almost exactly the same. So I take this out. I throw a sweater or a raincoat or uh, whatever the situation calls for into this bag. And then usually I take two cameras out with me. Um, each with a different lens on because that avoids lens changing and that sort of thing. So something like my Fuji X Pro 2 or my X-T1, I just wrap the bandolier strap around it, toss it in the bag, put it over my shoulder, and then the other one is always out, usually the one with the widest lens or the zoom lens, and I just walk around with that. Um, the straps that I love are these um, up straps, and it's a bandolier, nylon bandolier. There's nothing fancy about it except that it uh, it connects and disconnects with the uh, with the fast deck, which is really nice because if I've put a backpack on or I put my satchel on or a jacket, and I you know they they get kind of tangled, I can just snap it and pull the strap out through and and kind of uh, release myself from it. Um, otherwise, the only reason I like these is because they're really simple. They're not that expensive. They're nylon, so they slide easily around me instead of leather, which I used to favor. But I found they kind of got stuck, especially if I threw a backpack on or something. So these nylon ones slide really easily. I can just bring it up to my eye, photograph, and uh, because it's a wrap around, like a bandolier style, goes around my body this way, uh, it never falls off my shoulder. So I can bring it up to my eye, I can shoot, um, and I can tuck it behind my back, uh, even behind in with my satchel if I need to. If it suddenly starts raining, I can just tuck it in. So I really like that setup. Two up straps, two bodies, two lenses usually. And I bring with me, every time I go out, I bring with me a couple extra batteries. I slide those into the, uh, to the satchel. And then I carry one of these little think tank wallets. And uh, you'll see I've got, uh, I've got it completely loaded with 64 gig Lexar cards. And uh, one of the little pockets has, a, uh, has this, I love this. This is like 100, it's not like 128, it is 128 gigabytes it's a little tiny thumb drive and so uh when i photograph i have enough sd cards and i have more than this but i have enough that i can go 
wherever I'm going for a month. I can shoot, never clear my cards. I load my images to my laptop, but my laptop doesn't have the biggest hard drive in the world. So if I have more than, uh, than about 100 gigabytes, uh, I still need some room to operate the thing. So I carry with me a, uh, a small, actually it's not that small, it's a little bulky, but um, it gives me a lot of peace of mind. This is a G drive, um, I don't even know what they call it, ATC. Um, but it's there's a, a nice fast this is a thunderbolt drive nice fast i think this one's one or two ter this is one terabyte so it'll hold all my images plus a backup for my um, you know the, some of the travel images that i like to carry with me in case a client calls and says i need something from the last year of i've got images on here and i actually have a couple of these drives um, but it's kind of bomb proof it's uh, waterproof impact proof and i really like this so i'll i'll download all my images onto this but I will back up the good stuff onto that little tiny thumb drive, the final images, so that when I'm going home, I've got all my images still on cards. I've got all of my images on here, but I've also got the best of them. Uh, I take, obviously, I take the little USB key out and I stick it in a pocket, but it's always with me. Um, I, that little USB key is new. I haven't found one that small, but in the past I've just used a traditional thumb drive. So those are some of the things that I use and carry with me all the time. Uh, of course, the big hard drive doesn't come with me out into the field when I'm walking around. That stays in the hotel. But I've always got things kind of separated. So if I came back to my hotel room and I found the whole hotel room, God forbid, had been ransacked, I would still have all of my uh, cards in my card wallet. Or if I was mugged on the streets, at least if I went home when I went back to the hotel, the uh, the images would be there on the hard drive and I just suddenly had this thought of oh my god what happens if I get mugged and my hotel room gets burgled um, I'm probably having such a bad day that my images are not the primary concern so uh, you know you can only do so much but that's the way that I work when I'm on the field I'm trying uh, those of you that have been following me for a while uh, especially because of my mobility issues this stuff that I've been carrying has been getting smaller and smaller it's been getting pared down in terms of the the lenses and and that sort of thing but for me a couple cameras a couple lenses lots of SD cards plenty of batteries especially with the new mirrorless cameras when you're always using that electronic viewfinder you burn through the batteries really quickly and I found that in lower temperatures and uh, higher temperatures the batteries are even uh, worse than that I don't use the off-brand batteries anymore the Pearson or Pure Stones and the uh, or Pearstone, whatever they call it, and uh, Watson, and there's a bunch of uh, off-brand Fuji batteries. I have found that they do not hold the charge very well, and so I've sort of abandoned them and gone back to the expensive Fuji ones, uh, just for no other reason than they, they seem to serve me better, and I'd rather spend the money and carry less batteries. But uh, I carry 8 to 12 batteries with me, and not on me but in the field so that if I have a really long day I've got lots but if I go out walking you know through the streets of uh, Rome or something I, I probably just have three batteries total that gets me through a day uh, maybe two batteries for each camera if I think I'm gonna work all the way from sunset to sunrise to sunset anyway um, that's the simple stuff uh, the, you know I don't think that we need big complicated camera bags that scream camera bag uh, probably safer that we don't but also, I mean, I've never needed to carry, uh, to you know, st like all the padding in the camera bags weighs stuff. I've never felt the need to compartmentalize all my stuff. And the less gear you have, the less you need to do that. Uh, so I find that sort of, um, I mean, it's just lighter. I can walk longer and I'm more comfortable with not a, you know, a name brand camera uh, camera bag. Someone else asked me recently, do I use UV filters on my lenses? Uh, I used to. Uh, uh, in fact, everything I bought, I would buy a lens and I would buy a high quality B plus W UV filter. I don't do that anymore. In all of the years that I've been photographing, I've never scratched the front element of a lens. I, I know there are stories of people that have had them on, they've dropped their lens, the, the UV filter is protected. That hasn't yet happened to me. But I just, I, I don't like the extra glass between the very expensive lens that I've uh, bought uh, the optics are so good these days. The coatings are so good that I don't really feel like I need it uh, as a um, protectant for the, you know, just for the front element. And if I'm going to have a colossal accident and, and throw my lens on the ground, I probably deserve to uh, to break it. But I just, I never use them. So if, if you're asking what I use, 
I never use the UV filters. I prefer just to let the quality of the lens, um, uh, you know, that the coatings and stuff protect the, uh, um, the lens that I'm using. So anyway, thanks so much for joining me. I know this is a quick episode, but what I'm hoping is that the engagement will continue. And if you have questions, you can ask them in the comments. I do not, contrary to popular opinion, I object to, uh, to gear questions. I like them as long as our gear questions are serving the, uh, the more important question of, is it helping me make better photographs? And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So, uh, thanks so much. Remember gear is good, but vision's better. We'll see you next time.